21 is schedule update. The first thing you do when you do a schedule update is check to see if the baseline is set. So if I want to go ahead and I want to check to see if the baseline, I would say, is the baseline actually set? project project baseline set so it is set for this particular project if it wasn't we would set the baseline to the appropriate project if you're not sure how to do that you can go back to step number 17 and set it so uh, now that we know the baseline set um, you can see we have the data date there we're gonna go ahead and uh, save the schedule we're gonna go ahead and export the schedule just to be safe here um, we're gonna export it and this is the version that I'm currently working on project and then you can say where are you gonna put it what's the name of it and when we name it we want to name it instead of baseline schedule we're gonna go um, you know schedule update and then uh, the specific date you know so you know one seven or whatever date right so we go ahead and save that and then um, now we're gonna just hit finish and we've successfully exported it you can see that when we exported it uh, you know we are currently working on uh, the baseline schedule um, so we want to probably import that back and we can import it back in so we're not going to go through that task but you get what I'm saying we're going to make sure we save it uh, and we save it as schedule update now I want to organize the columns the columns in the order that we want are activity name ID activity name original duration man days remaining duration early start early finish late start late finish total float budgeted total costs physical percent complete and earned value cost in that order we want the we want the information uh, to be if not you remember you just go to the columns and you select the columns that you want to pull over uh, so now that we have that done we're gonna look at the scheduling options um, and the scheduling options are simply click on the clock with the play button there go to options and we're going to want to make sure that we make any open-end logic critical. We want to use the expected finish dates. Key one here is we want to schedule automatically when changes affect it. Okay. We want uh, to retain logic as we talked earlier. Calculate start to start from early start. We want it to be the longest path. And these are important. We want to compute the finish float as late finish minus early finish. Um, and then calendar for uh, scheduling uh, relationship lags those are all uh, you know uh, dependent upon the individual activities I leave a predecessor activity calendar now we want to make sure we calculate fo float based on each project now that we have that we can go ahead and close this right these are our settings um, we'll hit schedule before we do anything and now um, we're gonna go through and we're going to update all the percentages now much different than Microsoft project the percentages and dates have to be updated from the detail screen down here so we can go in through notice to proceed say that it finishes starts with life for we can just hit the finish one and it automatically updates that and gives assigns a hundred percent but say we go down here and you know something is less than a hundred percent so we're gonna do a few okay and we'll do a few more even though you know some of these may not sense to be make sense to be done on time so we're gonna go ahead and identify you see they're turning into blue blue means they're complete what I also like to do is go to bars here and I like to make sure that I select the percent complete bar percent complete bar and it's a it's a solid bar um, you know percent complete and it's you know based off of uh, you know the percent complete bar so okay you can see the actually you can see the actual black bar within the blue context there so if we go to one down here and we say okay this one was started but it's only 50 percent complete you can see the bar um, is shown within the green bar uh, instead of the blue bar because a blue bar reflects activities when they've been completed
Just so you can take a look, this is how I have all my bars set up in case you need to go through and set your bars up similarly. And you can click back to the video and pause. Okay, so now that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to update, go to every activity, update the start and completion dates. We're going to put the percent complete in there, okay? And we're going to once we get that all done, um, we have successfully updated all the percentages, the dates, the, the the actual starts, actual finish. And by the way, we actually missed something here. I just noticed it. Um, we're missing an actual start and actual finish column. So we go to dates here. And we'll go to actual start, and we'll go to actual finish, and what we'll do is we'll put them after the late start, late finish. Because you want to be able to see that information also. We'll resize the columns, of course. Um, and then once we once we have successfully done that, make sure everything's sorted by early start. Uh, we uh, we want to update the remaining durations. Um, uh, so, you know, how many days is it going to actually take? Say this one has 10 days. Maybe it's only going to take five. Okay. Uh, maybe this is only going to take three. We go to one maybe that has a percent complete. Like we had the one that was 50% complete down here somewhere. I forget where it was exactly. But, you know, we'll update one of these. Um, and we'll say this is 50% complete. And say the remaining days, it automatically brought it down to eight days. But maybe say that we need it less than that. Maybe we need to have it at, you know, uh, you know, uh, three days instead. You know, um, one thing you notice it here, it it didn't change the percent complete. We want to go and make sure we type in the physical percent complete. See, it says duration percent complete. We want to make sure every activity is physical not duration because duration based off of um, the extra duration involved here um, so we want to we want to make sure everything is physical so if I go through here and I put 50 percent and then I change my remaining duration to five it's gonna show me 50 percent because we want the physical percent complete to be shown here not the duration percent complete very very important once we put all the actual starts and actual finishes, the percent completes in, we show those columns, and now we're going to hit, uh, we're going to go through and we're going to uh, hit the calculate to uh, calculate our, our new start date with the, um, with the new current date, okay? So we have the current date, and say we go at the current date here, and then we go, okay, we're going to, our current date is like October 9th. That's the date every that's when we, we report up to a certain date and our current date is from this from this point forward. Remember we went to the options here. Here are all the options we went over before. And then we're gonna simply hit schedule. And what happens is is if you can see here is we have uh, successfully pushed out activities that haven't get get you know have been completed. Using the logic in the schedule, those activities have been pushed out beyond October. And because of that, um, you know, some activities are not complete yet. So you see that, you know, you see where the percent complete is and they've been pushed out. So it reschedules your project. That's what it does. It reschedules the project using the actual logic. Now, there's a problem with that, of course, because now we're not going to get done on time. We can tell that because our total float numbers are quite high. So um, uh, here, here's another key here is when you do, um, when you schedule and before you hit the schedule bu button, and this is something that, uh, you know, I'm, I may have missed here. Um, you can make sure that all the, uh, schedule logic is, is, you know, is based off of task dependent. So the tasks are all going to be dependent upon, uh, the logic contained in it. So make sure there's no constraints in every single one of the activities. We don't want any constraints at all. Um, and by doing that, we're essentially telling the, the, the scheduling software, we want everything to be, uh, you know, scheduled as soon as possible based on the task uh, logic, but not based on a constraint. 
I've gone over the bars in the Gantt chart. Um, this is the colors that are very standard. Blue is what's already taking place. Black is percent complete. Green is regular task. And red is the critical path. You can also see the status line here. This big black line here. That's the status line. That says this is the date we're reporting and we're moving forward. So anything that's not going to be done is going to be to the right side. Everything that has been done is going to be on the left, left side. So if you go through the calculations, it's pretty straightforward here. 100% of $17,500 is an earned value of $17,500, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, so if we went down and we went down to another and we said, okay, this one is actually, we missed it. So we're going to have to go back and put in some dates, some actual dates. This is going to be. before the data date and say it's only going to be 50% complete, 50% of 20,000 is $10,000. Notice it says duration percent complete and because it says duration percent complete, it's not showing a percentage. So you have to go back to the general tab. You have to change the percent complete to physical. Okay. And then when you do that, you got to make sure it's 50%. So now you see 50% of 20,000 is 10,000. So you want to go through and just, you, these are auto calculate functions. Make sure you, if you're using physical percent completes, not duration percent completes. I can't say that enough. Uh, now that we have the data date, the status date, that black line that ref reflects there, we've had all the activities gone out. We've gone through the calculations. Now we're going to go through the total float. You're going to see that we want to get rid of negative total float numbers. And those negative total float numbers will be will will reflect um, the you know the amount of time over the existing schedule it is. So we know right now it's 29 days over the schedule. So um, in order to 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 fix this, there's a couple things we have to do. First of all, we recognize that we have negative float. Okay, when we have negative float, you'll notice like we'll use this activity right here. Uh, concrete walks that the uh, that the early start dates are later than the late start dates and the reason that is is because early start dates and early finish dates are calculated from the beginning to the end late start and late finish are calculated from the end to the beginning so when you have negative float the dates are swapped the, the late dates will be before the early dates and the early dates will be after the late dates. I know that's tough for people to understand, uh, but that's very important you do. If you didn't get that, just go back and hear what I said. Because of negative float, the late and early dates are flip-flopped. The late start before the early and early start before start after the late. So if we're behind schedule and this is the you know the client's fault, the government's fault, or whoever's responsible for the job is there, if it's their fault, we're not going to do a recovery schedule. But if we are at if we're at fault and we need to recover the time, um, what we'll have to do is we're going to have to figure a way to reduce the critical path duration. Uh, remember, there's only four ways to reduce it. We went over compression before. Um, one way is we can just we can reduce the duration so we can talk to the exterior signage fabrication and we can talk to them and say you know what i know it said it was going to take 15 days but in reality it should only take us about five so we'll go ahead and put in five and look at that negative 21 number it'll pull back to to negative 11. Okay. Now keep in mind the critical path will change throughout this as we reduce the duration days. The other one is by changing relationships. We can go to the critical path and remember we're only changing relationships on the critical path. We're only changing durations on the critical path and we're explaining that in our narrative. Everything that we do explain our narrative. If we just say okay the review period it well you know it can't take place until the you know till the uh, actual reviews done but maybe we can start painting walls at the same time that we're priming the walls you know uh, we can do start to start with a lag of maybe two days and by doing that we have decreased the amount of critical path um, uh, duration and we've re we've we've uh, able to reduce uh, the the amount of total float um, from a negative number so remember there's only four ways to recover schedule and that is to 
change the duration by getting more resources, change the duration by changing the, the uh, smart relationship, or changing the materials or the means to do it, and that's it. Everything that we have done, we have to explain in our narrative. We can't just arbitrarily to do. And that covers schedule update.